One of the most frustrating things if you're not used to working with color is kind of making sure that the color is as near correct as possible of the likes of a newborn baby, baby or skin tones and things. And it can be very hard trying to neutralize or find a kind of an image that is the right look and feel to you. So if we just just switch on this other layer for a minute, you can see, well, the baby itself is a lot better in color. But again, when we kind of look at the side by side, this is a gray blanket. And basically we've now got a kind of a green blanket. So on both of these images, they're both wrong. Um, and basically what we've got to do is make sure that we're using some analysis of color to make sure that the baby's skin tone is near as uh, correct as pos possible. So if we just um, delete that um, one layer for a minute, if we're already in Photoshop, then of course uh, we can use the likes of hue and sat saturation. I'd always encourage you to use an adjustment layer instead of uh, kind of just working live uh, on on a normal uh, hue set uh, the saturation. Probably the reds are going to be the biggest thing to adjust as far as the sat the saturation as well as the actual tilt. Uh, the tint shift and things really. So you can see already what I'm doing here. I've just really knocked out a lot of that red warmth from a combination of both the saturation as well as actually the hue shift. So I've done a hue shift in the reds of plus 13, a minus sat saturation of about 22. I think that's a little bit too much. Let's go to 18. And then obviously as far as the lightness is concerned, we can just lighten that up just a little bit more. Then let's come back to our master and just see if it needs a little bit more of an overall tilt uh, in the color shift again, just a little bit. It's not a lot. In fact, we've done most of it in the reds there. And as far as the saturation overall, it's pretty good. So when we start to kind of knock that on and off, you can see the difference of what it was and what it is. But the, the key to it, in fact, is don't look at the baby skin look at the gray within the image and you can see that this is really a true gray if you're in <clears throat> any doubt create yourself a new layer and basically just uh, with your marquee tool just uh, make a selection click into your black and hit eight you know near the 18 percent gray so in that mid mid tone and then fill it with it now all of a sudden you can see any kind of color tone that is wrong within the image itself in in the good old days we <laughs> used to actually um uh, Every, every, every now and again, extend the uh, length of the print. So instead of going for a 10 by 8, we'd order a 12 by 8. But basically, we'd create a gradient um, running down the image itself. Just press OK to that. And we'd just kind of drag and drop along the edge of the photograph. So this was going to be the part that was going to be printed out. And of course, here, this is a quick way for us to actually see what is black, what is white, and what is gray in the print in the printability. The key thing is don't look at the black, don't look at the white, but always look into the gray. So when we start to actually see the, ba the baby's color tone, when you do the comparison of where it was, it now looks like screaming red and lobster red. Um, and you've just got to make sure that you wor you're working wise. And if you're at all worried about your playing with color, as I said, just do that sim the simple trick. Remember, these layers can just actually be deleted at any stage. But straight away, you can see if you're getting close towards the uh, the gray of 18% gray but I'm not looking at the skin tone I'm looking at the actual gray here and the gray of the blanket the gray of the tone that's really what I'm trying to get towards but the key thing is of course to really look at uh, the raw process in the file because that is where the color is going to be correct to begin with so let's take a look at that So we're back into Bridge. Let's just do a side by side comparison. These are both raw files. It's a, um, a duplicate of each other, in fact. Um, one has had a slight adjustment done to the other. So you can straight away see that the image on the right hand side is now screaming kind of red and the other image on the left hand side is screaming green. And we used to do a thing called uh, a color ring around uh, in the good old days. And even in Photoshop we used to actually include uh, an element of a ring around. Um, just seeing what happens when you add a little bit of green, uh, a little bit of magenta, a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow and so on and so on. Um, and 
but that facility is actually gone within Photoshop now, which is just a real shame. So let's look at the um, images and just bring them into RAW and basically just see um, how we can uh, kind of help ourselves to work f w easier uh, to have a, sys a system in place. So the first things first, it's learn to acknowledge what is a dark image and what is a light image. And if you're in any doubt, have a physical print that you've had done at the lab and just ba basically tape it to the side of your monitor and use that as a bit of a gauge for yourself. So if we completely ignore the image what is above to begin with and we start to look at just the actual gray of the um, uh, the mat here, you can see to begin with, if we go into the color balance, we pick up the white color balance and we pick something up that is near gray here, it's shifting in the color tone straight, uh, straight away with it. When we're clicking onto these uh, little el el elements, at the same time, it's changing the temperature of the, um, uh, the color balance here. So we can go in there, swipe it and basically change it straight away to a color balance that we want. So if we knew that we wanted a 5500 with a tilt a tint change of minus 12, then we would just actually type that in anyway. Okay, so think about what we're trying to create. We can't tell the density of this image because obviously we've exposed for the skin. Now, just because we use the meter, perhaps the baby's been positioned or moved or the light has moved a little bit, the consistency of the flash is gonna be the same as long as we haven't changed the settings on that. It'll only be the distance from subject to um, the actual light uh, is the thing that's gonna change. So then when we start to actually start to look in a close up level here, you can see straight, uh, straight away, even without anything else, this is too rich in color. So what do we need to change or assess within the image? This is gonna be a combination of things. What happens when we hit the auto? Well, basically that's gonna uh, adjust uh, the contrast, the highlights, the shadows, and so on. It is gonna adjust the temperature as well, but we don't really know too much what is going on here, but still, it is affecting the overall image. And if we just do before and after on that one, you can see already it's opened up some of the, den uh, the density as I click um, before and after by Control Z in that. So that's a good sign, but I still think it's a little bit rich, a little bit rouge. So it means that we just go into the HSL in the uh, huge saturation, the, lo uh, the luminance again. So this time in the hue, in the uh, reds, what are we trying to achieve? Are we trying to improve it or take it out? Well, of course, we know we're trying to take it out. Already, you can see there's a lovely fleshy color beginning to come in now. And then when we start to actually move the oranges, that's gonna actually affect it as well. So all we're doing is affecting the reds and the oranges within the image. The luminance, of course, is the brightness, so we could actually brighten up the orange just a little bit more, which we tend to use for the flesh color. So remember, I'm not looking at the overall, I'm looking at just the skin tone in front of us, and that's why it's so important to make sure that you're working on a calibrated monitor. Then we actually look at the reds and we go, okay, do we need to lighten those reds up a little bit? Um, we're getting very close, but notice, I actually haven't touched the saturation. At this point, there shouldn't be a really need to desaturate the image much because if we look, there's been a slight desaturation of image desk down here when we hit that or uh, the auto button, but I'm only using the auto button as a, a kind of an example. So let's just double click the hand tool and see the image for the first time of what it's gonna be like. So already it's kind of chalk and cheese to how rich and red it was before. But once more, if we just go back into that HSL, now we can see the, uh, the kind of the warmth of the image is perhaps just a little bit cool. Perhaps now we need to actually just increase that orange just a little bit more, just to bring a little bit more baby color back into actually the skin tone itself. But if you're photographing in exactly this way the whole time, once you're satisfied with this and you're working in a studio environment, of course, then you'll be able to actually hit your default which is making your baby uh, kind of quality the same the whole time. So now all I would do is go into the preset, save, set, save settings, and I would include it all in here, basically press, press save, 
and then all I really need to do is make sure I've got access to where the camera raw defaults are being uh, saved and then actually save it in towards here. So just don't do it in Photoshop. Think about what we can achieve in the likes of um, the raw processor first. So again, when we do the comparison just on these two images, you can see already what might look right to the eye when you start to analyze the likes of gray and tonality, you start to understand exactly what's going on here. And we haven't even enhanced the baby. So if I wanted to enhance the, ba uh, the baby more, let me just uh, double click. These, I'm just gonna wipe the face to begin with, slight increase in exposure just actually bring the baby's face almost like it's got a little mini spotlight on it. Click in new, just shrinking down my brush again. Go and wipe in the eyes. Increasing that exposure just a little bit so they're nice and bright. A little bit of sharpness in that as well with the clarity. And then basically I'm ready to do any fixing or whatever it is in Photoshop. So if we just do that before and af after of what we just saw, we can see now we've got that lovely, beautiful image. If we go back to um, taking that off the scale, this was the original image that was actually processed through the raw before. And if we just look at the other one, look how beautiful that is now. So remember, what we're trying to do is, is get a, a, a simple workflow. And especially when you were working with color you need to understand how to fix it and how the actual color wheel works together